The legality of the position of Governor Mai Malabuni of Yobe State as Chairman of the National Caretaker Committee of the All Progressives Congress and Governor of his state has taken a different turn with a lawsuit filed by the leadership of the People's Democratic Party seeking his removal as Governor of Yobe State over an alleged breach of constitutional provisions barring a sitting governor from holding two executive offices at the same time. Now, the National Executive Committee NEC of the APC had last year appointed Buni and others to manage the affairs of the party for a period of six months, which has been extended twice, sequel to the dissolution of the Adams Oshiomole led National Working Committee of the APC. Well, joining us now to speak on this and the race to 2023 is former legal advisor to the All Progressive Congress and convener of the United Action for Change, Dr. Moise Baniri, S-E-N. Dr. Moise, welcome to The Morning Show. Thank you for joining us. We did uh, read your, your article on this point. And in the very early bit of the article, you talk about the caretaker com committee, obviously, of your base state governor, May, May Malabunai, presiding over the affairs of the APC. I hope you can hear me. Yes, well, I hope, you, I hope you can hear me, but I'm just about this brouhaha within the APC. I'm hoping that we can get to the bottom of it. With the sitting governor of your base state still in his position, presiding over the APC, do you, in your opinion, let's start with whether or not you think that this, it, doesn't, it does seem as though we might have missed him, but I do want to start off with asking his opinion whether or not he thinks that it is a lawful Absolutely. situation. Especially given that PDP has now gone to court, mm. you know, to uh, test, you know, the law. Uh, you know, of course, that this stemmed from uh, the Undo, the, the Supreme Court judgment over the Undo uh, election yes. in which Akiridulu won, but there was a minority judgment, yes. you know, saying that because uh, Buni was not joined in, you know, uh, in that uh, lawsuit, you know, the thing could have uh, uh, gone the other, the other way. So now that PDP has gone to court, they're basically challenging, um, you know, uh, uh, the constitutional propriety of Governor Buni of UB State um, functioning as a governor and against the provisions of the Section 183 of the Constitution, also functioning as the chairman of the caretaker, you know, of the APC. You know, that's the, that's, that's the major thing, which is the fear that many people in yes. APC, including people in cabinet, you know, of the ruling party have expressed. You know, those are the things that we will expect that uh, Dr. Banire, being a legal, um, uh, uh, former legal advisor, yes. you know, to, to, to the party. Okay, so, so I think that uh, Dr. Banire is, is back. Well, good morning, Dr. Banere. We're happy to have you, and we're hoping that you can hear us now. I wanted us to start with us getting to the, the meat and bones of this situation. We know, as it stands, as Steve has rightfully just explained, that as it stands now, you've got Governor Abuni of Yobe State, who is also the chairman. He's also presiding over affairs at the APC. In your opinion, is this a lawful situation where he's been able to acquire two serious positions simultaneously? But I'm having a really challenge with the audio. Okay. Uh, what, what Femi was uh, asking you basically is to know your views uh, regarding what, is, uh, what seems to be consuming uh, the party in which you once served as uh, the national legal advisor, given the fact that the PDP uh, has now gone to court to challenge um, um, having Governor Buni, Mimala Buni, of UB state functioning on the one hand as a governor and then also functioning uh, as a chair of uh, the APC caretaker committee uh, to them, according to them, in violation of section 183 of the constitution of Nigeria, saying that you cannot as a governor hold two uh, executive positions simultaneously. Uh, what are your views, uh, given the fact that you have public, publicly uh, tried to warn the party you know, that it looks like, you know, things are not going right. What are your views, given that PDP has now formally gone to court to challenge what, what is happening in APC, especially with the situation with Governor Bruni? Well, uh, if I get you correctly, in the question, if you read the interpretation of Section 183 of the Constitution and Article 17 of the APC Constitution, 
Uh, my view is consistent with those expressed by most of the progressive uh, people in the sense that if the, the provision of Section 183 is clear that you cannot hold an executive position in government and at the same time hold any other executive position, whether you get remuneration or otherwise. And the Article 17 of the APC Control is even much clearer in this regard. It simply says that you cannot combine a governmental office with any other political office within the party. That binds everybody. And I think all those people that have been expressed contrary to that position have refused to address that question of the Article for the APC Constitution because it is binding on them. And certainly, if you recall that even the political parties were set up or established according to constitutional provision. So from my own perspective, certainly it is incongruent to hold the position of the governor while at the same time holding any executive position in the political party, whether temporary or otherwise. It is absolutely forbidden. And I think even if you take the, the Supreme Court decision, uh, in uh, Akere Dolo and Jegede is, in my own very strong view, equally suggests the same thing. Although the matter, according to the majority decision, could not be absolutely determined because of the non-joinder of uh, uh, Governor Buni, but the truth of the matter is that if you read throughout the entire length and breadth of the judgment, you will discover that they have absolutely given the party head up to say that, look, this thing is illegal, it is unconstitutional, and I believe that if the party is wise, by now they should have been finding solution to it. But of course, my view of that in their usual arrogant manner, they will continue until they made their doom. <laughs> so that is my view of it. Uh, okay, Dr. Dr. Van Rebo, let me also quickly take you up on uh, this same subject, because I recall uh, that in 2018, while you were still uh, the national legal advisor to APC, a part of your own recommendation, you know, and, and I'm sure that you, you took the credit for that, part of your recommendation to the party uh, when um, uh, the Oshomali-led NWC, you know, was experiencing crisis, was that there should be a caretaker you know, committee. So the word caretaker, having a caretaker committee to take charge of the party is not particularly alien to you or to the party. But then maybe what the problem is, is that you now have a sitting governor presiding over it. But then it's a caretaker committee. It's not the chairman of the party. As the Attorney General of the Federation has, has explained, you know, as a few other people in APC have explained. So uh, given the fact that you once suggested that the caretaker committee should, you know, uh, uh, take over uh, the party uh, before Oshiomale, Oshiomale be, you know, uh, became the, 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 the chairman in 2018, do you think that the party has totally gone wrong? And isn't there a way that they can hide uh, legally? It might not be morally tidy, it might not be decent, but then is it truly unlawful? Well, there are two ways to it. Uh... Like you rightly said, uh, the, for me, from my perspective, particularly article 10 of the APC Constitution, which is already construed in PDP and McAfee, because we have identical provision in the PDP Constitution equally. And if you have read that particular decision of the APC I absolutely don't go wrong with setting up the article committee the affairs of the What is uh, what is uh, wrong or offensive is that you now populate people who are holding governmental position at the same time. And that is where the challenge is. So for me, I believe that uh, the proper thing for them to have done is setting up such critical committees to have been to take people who are not part of the governmental structure presently and populate that particular committee with them and run the affairs of the party. I don't where anybody can, in all seriousness, say that the uh, governor really and some of them that are in government of the governors that are in the committee are not 
running as in front of the party. What are they doing there? Are they not the people who have the nomination of the party? Are they not the people that initiate all the various programs and policies of the party? Are they not the people administering the party presently? So for me, it's a bit absurd for anybody to think otherwise or to argue otherwise. The truth of the matter is that as far as I'm concerned, I know that it's permissible within the APC culture to have such committee. But the manner of the composition is what is offensive presently and that needs to be addressed in their own interest. Thank mm. you. I mean, as you've said, it obviously serves some type of purpose because even if no one brought it to your attention, if you know that this position would set off an alarm bell, naturally you take a step back and say, well, let me focus as my position within government, as governor, wherever the case may be. The fact that this hasn't happened with the governor of your base, for example, shows that they, it, their position within the party must serve some type of political and powerful uh, purpose, saying that the... If you were the electorate looking at what's happening at the APC, even if, even if you take away the PDP's issues for a moment and you see that you have these government officials who are still uh, are wanting to hold... Off. Yes, you know, I'm, I'm saying that you, know, you still have these government positions, uh, gov people within government who are still adamant that they want to hold on to their positions within the party. You know, it leads the question to, you know, to why. And naturally, perhaps the electorate might feel as though this is an example of some type of underhanded behavior, whether or not it's allowed within the party's constitution, the optics might not be right. And then when you look at optics, APC obviously hadn't had a good time. When you look at the fact that perhaps they, them losing rivers in 2015, what happened in Zamfara uh, in 2019, and of course the Edo elections in 2020, APC have, have they have a lot of get, uh, ground that they've lost that they need to recover. So what did you think? Yes. Have a major challenge with can, can, he, can he hear you properly? I'm not, I'm not sure. Interestingly, I think I'm getting Mr. Johnny Day better. I don't know what's going on. Oh, okay, okay. No. <laughs> I'm not understanding what's happening. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you, you can, you know, decode what you're trying to say. Okay. Yeah. You, 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 you might want to rephrase, or you, you know. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so the APC, things aren't looking great for them. When we look at their political elections running up until this point, they lost Rivers, lost Zamfara, lost Edo last year. As we approach Anambra in November, do you think that the, the messiness of what's happening now could ne negatively impact the APC? Honestly uh, speaking, I'm unable to get Okay, okay Dr. Barry, let, 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 me, let me assist Femi there. Uh, she's basically saying that you know, this internal wranglings, this, you know, uh, crisis, you know, that is seemingly consuming the ruling APC party might have a far reaching um, consequences on the chances of the party going forward. And of course, you know, on the one hand, there will be the possibility that the congresses that have been uh, conducted purportedly, you know, might be jettisoned. And then for another election coming in November, November the 6th, in a number of states. So she's saying basically that the chances of the party might be jeopardized if uh, the party cannot look for truth, cannot find you know, resolution to what is happening. Do you think that uh, an implosion uh, is staring the party in the face at this point in time? Well, I absolutely agree with you, with you on the observation that the primary, the congresses, and the eventual nomination process certainly will most likely be endangered ultimately. Because if the foundation is lacking, there's nothing you can build on it, that's the truth of the matter. So, uh, like you rightly said, if at that now, which I'm aware of, that the, uh, the notice the people noticed expected to be served and which was served on INET for the purpose of the Congress and Convention was signed equally by the governor. Then certainly there is something that is wrong with that notice. And that the implication of which is that no notice has been served on, uh, on INET. And if, uh, if there have been no notice on INET, no valid Congress or Convention could have taken place. So ultimately, if all the people that we ultimately the product of that Congress will be legal. 
And if that is like that, no subsequent nomination president can be viewed on it or So I suspect, like she rightly said, that the situation mildly resemble or adopt that of the Sanfara. In which event that we might, the party might end up being declared having not get any candidate for the elected position ultimately. And those are the dangers that lose my head in the ruling party. And uh, like I said, it's their choice and the which direction to want to go. But I'm sure that most of the progressive leaders among them truly know that that is the correct position. And even let's even assume without considering that that position that we have converted is not even correct. The reality of the matter is that the extent that there is controversy around this subject, it makes it cloudy. And if you are in a cloudy situation like that, the best thing to do is to regret evaluate your position and adopt new strategy towards uh, making your position clearer. So that is where wisdom lies. And that is my own expectation. But if we decide to go otherwise, then it might well be that ultimately there is a way, there is a, there is a good thing in the offering for the people of Nigeria uh, from that uh, iniquity. Mm. Thank you. Oh, okay. I mean, I... I, I, I... I flow with you, you know, given the fact that you've, you're, you've broken this down, you know, from using the law and, and the legality of it. But then you know that it's not only APC uh, that is experiencing internal wranglings. I mean, the, the, the main opposition party, PDP, is also embroiled uh, in his own issues. You know, you know what is happening to Uchi Secondos. However, given that APC, the manner in which it came about as an alternative, it has always been bogged down by who should be in charge, uh, from Oyegun to Shomale, now trying to look for um, um, a, a new chairman. Is this about who controls, in your own opinion, is this about who controls the party machinery, given that we'll be going into primaries uh, later next year? And I would also like you to add the fact that you mentioned in one of your uh, public postings uh, that uh, the, the party, APC, has got both national and international godfathers. I wonder who those are and what role do you think that they are playing in all these problems that is, you know, uh, uh, that are bedeviling the party, the national and the international godfathers? Who are they? Well, thank you very much. Let me start from the part, from the part of the internal wrangling in PDP. PDP situation is much better than AP situation right now because they know they have a problem and they are addressing their own challenge. Uh, the outcome of their last neck or the elders meeting was that they convened their neck and speed up the process of their convention towards the emergence of a new set of executives. Once that is done, of course, they will be on some footing on that. But for now, for me, it is missing the road. So they do not even know the direction to go in the dark as far as I'm concerned. But that's as it may, uh, the other component is that there are two issues that are playing out here. The first aspect is what you alluded to in terms of the fact that 2023 election is coming up. And of course, there are so many actors are positioning themselves. And of course, a lot of agitation. That is expected. But beyond that, what fundamentally is wrong is the refusal or the neglect of those of the principal actors who want to abide by the provision of their own constitution if they sign for themselves. That is the major challenge. If they obey, you know, regardless of whatever be your tendency, if you abide by your constitution and know that you have, uh, in fact, in a very strong view, there will be less acrimony within the political world. But unfortunately, they are ever reluctant by by the dictate of their constitution, that has been the major issue. And of course, there are so many governments all over the local to stay national to international, as I said. Of course, we have a situation where a lot of people within the fold of the people believe that the governors are now charged of the party. In fact, they use the word hijack, and the governors in the previous in the country have in the ruling party have hijacked the party entirely. There are some other people who feel that with one respect or the other, they are leaders of the party and they must have a stake and they must be able to have control 
the respect of that. That is another tendency in that, in that regard. And of course, there are some other ones that believe that because of the wealth that they have, they can use that also to throw from the, uh, uh, some, the, uh, some talent within the fold. So there are so many of them. It depends on where you are looking at. And when I say that we have international ones, some are even respectively even solicit external support in terms of funding. For example, I did not mention, but I know that I heard from the day find that one of the uh, major players within the ruling party is also soliciting external support from the country in Asia. When that is there, regard them as international sponsor also. Like Ex them external so, external so support in terms of funding. What, what, in, uh, what type Nigeria. of external support, Dr. Banire? When the uh, in a major process is around the corner, you are likely, like I've been warning, have more inclusion within the Peruvian party than elsewhere in any other party in Nigeria. Mm. You, you, you mentioned external support. What, uh, is it in terms of funding? And what, what would an Asian country do for, for Nigeria as far as you know, a political party, a ruling party for that matter? You know, uh, uh, you know we are doing political... It is like I told you, we have a sizable number of political merchants. Yeah. In Nigeria now. <laughs> so as far as they are concerned, whichever we are in one place, we must not deceive or pretend about the only place the civilian to the mm. political or uh, electoral process of Nigeria. So whichever way they can find the money to fund their objective of the week and they go and they do really. And they use it at that to even disadvise those political parties. So it plays a significant role, undoubtedly. Mm. Mm. You know, last week, uh, Steve, I might need you to decipher this for me again. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we did have we did have PDP party chieftain uh, Shogun show with me on the show last week. Yes. And during his conversation, he ten, he say, seemed to allude to the fact that the PDP are still very much in support, or very or at least admitted that uh, Atiku still has a lot of support within the People's Democratic Party. I wanted to ask you when we talk about. Uh, the presidency, because ultimately all roads lead to 2023. Mm -hmm. Does the APC have any interest in zoning, or rather, I should put well, it they, as a legal do. question? The, the APC has already said that you know yes. it, it should come to the south. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. So with the APC, I was going to ask you if you agree that the APC will move to use a southern candidate as they head to 2023, and do you think that candidate would be? Uh, Tinubu, or would it be someone that we don't expect? And since we are talking about zoning to the south, the PDP already have alluded to the fact that they don't have much appetite in specifically doing that. With the APC singing another tune, do you think the candidate they put forward will be Tinubu? Well, if I get it correctly, are you talking about the question of zoning? Yes. Y yes. Uh, a question of zoning on the one hand, APC has said that, you know, uh, it will most likely zone the presidency to the south. Uh, and then on the other hand, uh, she's also asking, uh, if that happens, who do you think will likely be the candidate of the party? Will it be Tinubu or will it be any other person? The vice president is one of the you know, uh, uh, key people you know, being touted. And if you also saw the, uh, uh, the cover of this day last week, Monday, uh, a number of names, about 32 names, were mentioned as potential, you know, candidates who can, you know, be president. But given the fact that APC might likely zone to the south, who will you tip personally uh, uh, to, to be the flag bearer of the APC? Well, let me start by saying that uh, to, the, uh, to the best of my knowledge, there is no provision in any of the party's constitution, including the Nigerian constitution, talking about rotational business. Uh, it's usually an informal understanding, or if you like, only gentleman's agreement that the presidency of Nigeria should be between the north and the south. That has been the situation. But notwithstanding, there is no rule that says that somebody else from any other region cannot come out. Only the last one. I recall vividly, for example, that uh, uh, Okorocha contested with uh, uh, President Buhari during the first one. Uh, 
there was no agitation about that. And I believe that there can't be even be anyway because it's, it's the person's constitutional right to show interest in the presidency. And as of now, none of the political party has really come out to say this red is going to stone his own presidency. Uh, it's still a matter that is likely new. But I believe that if, like I said, the convention is to be followed, then it automatically means that the presidency must come to the South. And if it comes to the South, as of now, nobody can really say that this is the person that is likely to emerge. For example, take the ruling party, like you have said, you mentioned Tinumbu, you mentioned uh, Vice President or Chief Ajo. All those people have not, even up to now that I'm talking to, indicated interest at all, that they are interested in contesting the presidency. Uh, the only person maybe I've read is um, uh, Yerima, which is the northerner, who is the northerner, and uh, he, I think, I don't know which party Junior uh, Cooper is coming from. I read about that uh, yesterday that is equally interested in it. So we've not really had people come out to say that they are interested in it. By the time we are the of those who have manifested their intention, we can start evaluating. But if you add to my personal opinion, I've always believed in competency and merit. As far as I'm concerned, the more we emphasize what divides us, the more we endanger ourselves, and the more retrogressive we, the country becomes. So for me, what is most important is that I need a president who can deliver for me so that I will not remember the woes of the moment. That is all that I care about. And that is what I believe that Nigeria generally will bother themselves about. I tell you for free, most Nigerians will even ask who is in charge if everything is working well in the country. It's when things go wrong that we start wondering who is even in charge. And I believe that the only way to go out of that is to look for a very competent and who is a Nigerian and not necessarily a Southerner or a Northerner, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. All right. So thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Banire, uh, former National Legal Advisor of the APC and the convener of United Action for Change, sharing perspective with us uh, on the situation within the APC and the likely uh, turn of events that we might witness as we move closer to 2023. Thank you so much for coming.